12 in Zone 4 has also been rezoned and will now be bounded on the west by Simmons Boulevard and on the east by Dana Boulevard. West by Simmons, east by Dana. You know, Higginbottom, you'd think they'd have the courtesy to wait and rezone the city after I retired. <laughs> Go on. Subsector B is now subsector A, and subsector A has been enjoined by subsector C, making it subsector AC sector. Well, that puts the uh, waterfront patrol over here in the park, and the motorcycle patrol will be here in the river. <laughs> hey, come on, this is ridiculous. Amplifone. Captain Anders' office. Yes, I will tell him. That was the dispatcher. Car 419 and car 29, both answering a call in Sector E, previously known as Sector P, are calling for a tow truck. Don't tell me they ran into each other. No, sir. Good. They ran into car 44. What was car 44 doing in Sector E? Looking for Sector P. <laughs> hey, bottom, this rezoning is driving me crazy. None of my units know where they belong. In fact, one of them gets lost every day. Captain Anders' office. Detectives Cook and Robinson are here, sir. Send them in. Send them right in, please. Let's have your report. Well, Captain, we have some good news for you, and we have some bad news for you. Which would you like to hear first? Good news. Ah, George, tell them the good news. We didn't get lost today. Let me have the bad news. Uh, well, Captain, we checked out all the merchants on the north side, and none of them will admit that they're paying protection to Nick Slate. They're all too scared to talk. Well, I'm not, and I'll give it to you straight. We're going to crack this protection racket wide open. I don't know how, but we're going to do it soon. That's impossible, Captain. You can't crack the case open without a lead, and nobody's willing to talk. I've got an idea. What is it? The reason that those merchants won't admit that they're paying for protection is because they're afraid of the mob that they're paying for protection. Would you clarify that? If we tell them that we're giving them protection from the protection guys, then they won't have to pay the protection guys anymore for protection because they're getting protection from us. Which means that they won't be afraid to talk about protection because they'll feel that they're getting that protection from us and the protection guys won't have to protect them anymore. Understand? That's much better. That clarifies it a lot. Captain Andrews' office. It's Mr. Kellner. He wants to speak to either Sergeant Crook or Sergeant Robinson. He's one of those who refuse to talk. Oh, you better take it, Lenny. Detective Sergeant Crook here. Yes, Mr. Kellner. Now, you stay right where you are. We're on our way. Kellner's ready to talk. Well, it made him change his mind. That's unimportant. The point is, he's willing to talk. He's the fifth one who's willing to talk. In fact, he's the only one who's willing to talk. I won't talk. But you said... War? Again? War? But why? Because of those new zoning laws. I don't follow you. Uh, George, let's explain it to him on the map. Oh, no, you don't. Don't you dare touch that map. I've been rezoning this map since 7 o'clock this morning. You put one finger on this map, so help me. Okay, okay, we won't touch it. Now, you can explain it to me, but don't you dare touch your hands on this map. All right. <laughs> According to the new zoning law, the city, the north side, south side boundary line has been moved three blocks north, which means that the south side has picked up three blocks that formerly belonged to the north side. And the south side has already moved into the new territory and started demanding protection money. Now go on. Well, the problem is that Nick Slade is not going to hold still for the south side taking over any of its territory. Which means that we're on the verge of an all-out gang war. And a lot of innocent people will be caught right in the middle of a shooting gallery. So we've got to stop this before it starts. Crook Robinson, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pick up Nick Slade and Johnny Novak immediately and bring them into my office. <laughs> Gentlemen, the district attorney has launched an all-out war against the protection rackets in this city, and that means you two gentlemen are going to be out of business. Uh, in the interim, I'm not going to sit back and let a gang war erupt in this city. I'm with you, Captain. I don't want no gang war. And stay out of my territory. That is now my territory. I'm only following the new zoning laws like a good citizen. Get out of my territory, you'll be a dead citizen. You hear that, Captain? You threatened my life? And I got a good mind to call my attorney and have him bump you off. You just try it. Nick, you got a permit for that gun? Of course. I'm a hunter. Put it away. Okay. You just remember one thing, Novak. I took a lot of time building up that territory and I can have nobody muscling in on it. 
Zoning laws are no zoning laws. He's got a point there, Captain. I like this guy. Hey, Lenny, you can't overlook the fact that Johnny Novak is the head of the South Side Association for Retailers, and the territory in question is now located on the South Side. Hey, you were all right, you know that? All I'm trying to do is avert a gang war here. Now, any differences between you two can be settled through peaceful negotiation. So you can settle this through arbitration. I'd be happy to arbitrate. Same goes for me. Good. So you pick somebody to represent you during the arbitration. I'll act as mediator. You? Yes, me. <laughs> I'm a law enforcement officer, and the safety of the citizens of this city is my responsibility. Now, gentlemen, uh, who do you want to arbitrate for you? I'll take Judge Winters. Uh, I'm who I'd like to have. Why don't you take Judge Swanson? Ah, uh, no, I don't trust him. Why not? Because he's on your payroll. So what? He's honest. Hey, no, that's right. You can't really expect him to pick somebody who's on your payroll to arbitrate in his behalf. Why, he'd never stand a chance in the arbitration. Hey, I like you. You've got a good head on your shoulders. Hey, how about you arbitrating for me? Nah, I don't want any part of that. George, if your arbitrating for Novak will help avoid a gang war in this city, I strongly recommend that you do so. <sighs> okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, if he's going to have a cop on his side, I want a cop on my side. I'll take the little guy. I accept. You want him? You don't know what you're doing? You don't have to answer that question. <laughs> it's all settled. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, we go into arbitration. Information that's divulged during this hearing cannot be used by either party as admissible evidence in a court of law. Now, let's get on with the arbitration. <sighs> It's my client's contention. Objection. Objection. He hasn't said anything yet. That's what I'm objecting to. Let him get on with it. <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> it's my client's contention that he's within his legal rights by demanding protection money from the shopkeepers in the area in question. Legal rights? You call forcing innocent people to pay protection money legal? What do you think he's been doing? Gentlemen, gentlemen, sit down, folks. We're not here to question the legality of forcing innocent people to pay protection money. The district attorney will take care of that during his probe. All we're trying to arrive at here is an agreement between both parties involved that we'll avert a gang war in this city. Now, let's continue. Let's get on with it. Very well, sir. Now, my client, Mr. Slade, feels that your client, Mr. Novak, has violated an unwritten agreement between the North Side Association and the South Side Association when he demanded payments from the North Side clients, protection payments. But they weren't North Side clients. They were South Side clients due to the new zoning laws. Therefore, my client, Mr. Novak, has jurisdiction to the three blocks in question. Sir, my client has spent a lot of time and a lot of money in organizing that section of the city into the smooth operating protection racket that it is today. And I have the figures right here to prove it. Now look, Captain, you just don't walk into a store today and threaten or intimidate a storekeeper into giving up just like that. You gotta beat them up a little bit. You gotta push them around a little bit. Maybe burn the store a couple of times. Shoot at a couple of his relatives. And it takes top personnel. And top personnel is expensive today. I have the figures right here to prove it. Now, if you break these figures down in an hour-by-hour -hour basis, you'll find that the average gangster today makes almost as much as a plumber. Well, let me see those figures. All right there, Captain. Captain, we don't even care what those figures say. The point is that the new zoning laws give my client the right to do business in those three blocks that are now part of the south side of the city. That's a legal loophole. If your client wants to do business in my client's territory, then let him pay some sort of reparation. That's right. You want to do business in my territory? Buy me out. We don't have to buy you out. You are already out. Oh, really? Well, just try moving into our territory and see what happens. Just try it. Well, you can all you want, but my client's not going to pay one cent for what's already his. Right? Right. Is that your final offer? Final. Okay, that tears it. Come on, Nick, we're walking. <laughs> no, Higginbottom, I finally get Slade and Novak to agree to sit down and negotiate, to swallow the differences, to control their tempers, then those two nincompoops lose their tempers and blow the whole deal. I can't wait to get started on this report. <laughs> Captain Anders' office. They're uh, here. Well, send them right in. Send them right in, please. Captain, wait until you hear this. We've got something to tell you that's going to make you very happy. I accept. You accept what? Your resignations. 
We're not resigning. You just told me that you were going to tell me something that would make me very happy, and nothing would make me happier than you resigning. <laughs> oh, no? Tell him, George. Well, we took Slade and Novak back after the meeting. We had a long talk with them. And we got them to agree to meet again. Not with you two, they're not. They're not meeting with anybody. They're meeting alone at the Valentine Warehouse at 4.30 this afternoon on Chicago Street. And they agreed to come unarmed and without any of their men. Captain Anders' office. It's Louis Loomis, one of our underworld informers. Loomis works as a mechanic in the garage across the street from the Valentine Warehouse. So it might have something to do with the meeting between Novak and Slade. Let me have it here, come on. All right, Louis, what do you have? What? Where? When? All right, Louis, thanks. Slade is setting a trap for Novak. What? Plans to ambush him. Where? At the Valentine Warehouse. When? At 4.30, when Novak shows up for their meeting, Slade's going to get there five minutes early. When Novak walks in with his men, Slade's going to let him have it. Well, we got to call Novak and warn him. It's 4.15. Novak must already be on his way there. All right, Cook, Robinson, get down to the Valentine Warehouse and warn Novak about the ambush. Right, sir. Captain Andrews' office. It's Louis Loomis again. Oh, let me have it. Yeah, Louis. What is it? Yeah, thank you very much. What is it now? Novak found out about the double cross, and he's going to turn the tables on Slade. What's he going to do? He's going to get to the Valentine Warehouse with all his men before Slade arrives. And when Slade arrives, Novak's going to let him have it. Contact Crook and Robinson, tell him to get there, and not to warn Novak, because Slade's going to get there before Novak. Tell him to warn Slade and not Novak. <laughs> Captain Andrews speaking. It's Loomis again. Yeah, Louis, what is it? What? When? Now? Thank you, Louis. Slade and his men just came in the back way of the warehouse, and they're staked out behind some crates. Yes? But while Slade was coming in the back way, Novak and his men were sneaking in the front way. You mean they're going to have a shootout? Not yet, but both gangs are in the warehouse. Slade is staked out at one end of the warehouse, and Novak and his men are staked out at the other end. Neither gang knows the other is there, and they're waiting for each other to show up. And whoever goes through that door is going to get it from both gangs. Right, that'll be Crook and Robinson. Hey, come on, contact them right away and tell them not to enter that warehouse. Yes, sir. Excellent job in handling this case. You have opened the gates so the district attorney could plow straight ahead with his investigation of the protection rackets in this city. And now, I've got a special surprise for you. What's that, Captain? The commissioner is on his way down here to present you both with the highest award that this department bestows upon its men. Yes, you can, Oh, show the commissioner right in. Sergeant Crook, Robinson, stand up right there. Commissioner Norton! Chase! Gentlemen, on behalf of the people of this city, it is my pleasure to award you with the highest honor the department has to offer for your efforts in narrowly averting a gang war which would have resulted in many innocent lives being lost for having captured 28 underworld figures, for meritorious service above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant Crook, I now present you with the Medal of Merit. Uh, pardon me, Commissioner, but if you don't mind, I think my partner should get the medal first. Very well. Uh, thanks, Commissioner, but uh, actually I think my partner should get the medal first. It was his plan that uh, allowed us to capture those guys without even firing a shot. As you wish. Uh, forgive me, Commissioner, but my partner is trying to be very noble. I mean, I couldn't have done the thing at all without him. I really think he should get the medal first. Why don't we do it alphabetically, uh, Commissioner? Actually, Crook comes before Robinson. Good idea. <laughs> but George comes before Lenny. <laughs> See, when you're going alphabetically, you don't go by first names, you go by second names, right? Uh, look, George, let's not make a big hassle out of this whole thing. It's just that I think that you should get the medal first, that's all. Well, you've got your feelings, and I've got mine, and I think that I'd like to see you get the first medal. Well, that's very nice of you, George, but no, it's out of the question. Out of the question, question. Captain Andrews, how long have these men been in your command? Six years, Mr. <laughs> Thank you.